So today we're going to be answering the question, is it a function or is it not a function? Yesterday you guys were doing that um, function carnival and uh, this class didn't go on to the second assignment but my other classes did where you were looking at some function stories, okay? So today we're going to put some of those scenarios into like actual math and we're going to talk about whether or not we have a function or not a function. And today we're just looking at sets of numbers. Um, tomorrow we're going to be taking this information and putting it into a graph and using a graph to decide if it's a function or not a function. Okay, so there's two different ways. We're going to look at a set of numbers and decide if it's a function or not a function or we're going to look at a graph and decide if it's a function or not a function. Okay, um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is ways we will see the numbers presented. Okay, ways we will see the numbers presented. So there are lots of different ways you're going to see your numbers today and we're going to um, put it into one format because I think it's easiest to just look at it um, one way, but it's called a mapping diagram, but you may see it as a table. You're going to see it as a graph tomorrow. You may see it as a already put into what we're going to call a mapping diagram, which will make life easier because that's what we're going to put it into in order to answer the question, is it a function or not a function? You may just see a list of numbers or a list of ordered pairs. Or, as we move on this week, you're going to see it in a description. So that would be like a story problem, a word problem, a scenario. So remember last week when we were matching up those card sorts and we had a table and a graph and an equation, for those of you who did that activity, and a scenario or a scene, right? That was the other way that you might see it presented, and you're going to have to find that. All right, so there's two vocabulary words, well, three that we're really going to focus on today. The one, the first, is our domain. Okay, our domain we also know as the input. So if you remember way back to the beginning of this unit, we were doing input output tables. It's the input. It's also known as our X values. So our domain, domain is our input or our X values. So it's the numbers we're putting into the equation. Our range, if our domain's the input, what do you think the range is? Output. Output. If our domain are our x values, what do you think the range are? Y values. Y values. Very good. Okay. So we're just putting some vocabulary words to things we already know. So if we have a table, what do we usually have listed on the left of our table, input or output? It says input and output. Sorry, I wrote it kind of small. What do we usually have listed on the left, X or Y? So 
So normally this is going to be our domain and this is going to be our range. Okay, so domain, domain are the numbers that we're putting into the equation. So we're choosing what numbers are going to be put in there. Sometimes they'll be given to us. And our range is what goes out. So if you guys remember back to those um, function tables, we would put numbers in. They would list the x values, and then we'd have an equation, like y equals 2x plus 1. And they gave us x values, but on some of those tables, they didn't give us x values. And does anybody remember what Ms. Hendricks told you to put in there nope. for x values? Zero was one of them. I believe she said negative one, or sorry, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Okay? So you can put anything you want in for the x values. So that input is up to you. The output comes from plugging in these numbers for x to get a y. Okay? So the domain are the numbers we put in for x. The range are the numbers we get out when we solve that equation. All right, so now let's relate this to a function. In a function, each domain value, so domain, x or y? Uh, x. Good. has exactly, so no more than, no less than, exactly one range value. So in order to have a function, each domain or x has to have exactly one range or y. If that is not the case, then it is not a function. Remember the question that we wrote at the top of our paper. Is it a function or is it not a function? That's the question we're answering today. Is it a function or is it not a function? So in order to have a function, each x value or domain has to have exactly one y value or range. Exactly. No more than, no less than. All right, raise your hand if you have ever participated in a sport. Perfect. Um, raise your hand if you've ever participated in a sport that is not a team sport necessarily, like basketball, football, something like that. Um, give me an example. Reese. Something other than a team sport. Wrestling, that's a perfect example. Dylan? Archery. Okay, good example. Cross country or track. Okay. Very good. So when we go to a wrestling meet or a track meet or a cross country meet, 
or an archery tournament, something like that, you may go just as an individual, right? But if you're competing for Hawker growth, then you go as a team. So if it's if you're running or wrestling on your own, how do you get points? How does the team assign how does the team win over other teams? How do they know? By being better. Okay, but what does that mean? It's individual scoring for practice. Do you know how the scoring works for wrestling yeah. in middle school? Some. Some. What about you, Josie, for cross country? Do you know how it worked in middle school? <laughs> The more people you get to cross the finish line first, then the other teams more points you get. Perfect. All right, I'm going to use wrestling because my husband was a wrestler, and anytime I can use wrestling in class and tell him that I use wrestling, he's proud. Okay? So let's say we're at a wrestling meet. And let's say we wrestle, usually you wrestle more than one match in a meet. Is that correct, Reese? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Reese isn't just gonna go wrestle one time and then be done. He's gonna wrestle more than one time, okay? So let's say there's like five people in Reese's group, weight, they group them by weight class, right? So five people in Reese's group and they're gonna rest, all wrestle each other until they figure out who's the best, second best, third best out of those five, okay? So let's say Reese gets first place so for his team, he's going to score five points. And you can relate this to any other topic. This is mostly like in track, track and field. This is how they score a lot of things, okay? And then let's say second place. So the second place person in that little pool that he's wrestling in, they get three points. Let's say the third place person they're gonna get two points. And we'll just stop at fourth place. We'll make it an even number. So Reese only has to wrestle three times. They score one point for their team, okay? So even though they're individually wrestling, they're scoring points for their team. So here's our scenario. First place gets five points, second place gets three points, third place gets two points, fourth place gets one point. Then at the end of the night, they add up everybody's place and they give them their points accordingly. The team with the most points wins. Okay? There are a lot of different ways we could show this information. We could simply turn this into a table, right? One, five, two, three, three, two, four, one. We could also list it as a set of ordered pairs. If this is a table, what would my ordered pair be from the first row? One, five. My second row would be two, three. My third row would be three, two. And my fourth one would be four, one. Okay, same set of information, just written a different way. So here's how we're going to test to see if we have a function in this scenario. Because remember, the question is, is it a function or is it not a function? Okay, in a function, each domain or x value has exactly one range value or y value. So this is where we're going to put it in what I said earlier. And if you run out of space at any point, just flip to the next page into a mapping diagram. That's what it's called. I'm not worried that you know what it's called, but just so you know. And with a mapping diagram, we're going to put our x values and our y values separately. Okay. And it kind of looks like a table. Some of your worksheets, it's actually an oval. You don't have to draw this oval off to the side, but some of your worksheets, it kind of looks like this. Instead, it really doesn't matter. But we're testing 